Hey there, this is Lore, and today you're going to learn how to use this amazing Notion template to price your handmade items in the best way possible. This template will help you stop losing money and start taking your business in the right direction, so let's get started. Once you open the template, you will see the main page, which has three sections. Your product gallery, inventory tracker, and fixed cost calculations. Before we start adding your products, let's add some raw materials in the inventory section. To add new materials, simply click on the Add New button and enter the name or type of material, such as white spandex fabric. In the next column, input how many units of the material you purchased, and in the column after that, add the type of unit, for example, here it's yards. Finally, in the last column, input the cost of the material. If you ordered that material online, don't forget to include the shipping cost in the price. This section will automatically calculate the cost per unit of all your raw materials. Take some time to add everything you use to create your products, including mailer bags, thank you inserts, tissue paper, and any other supplies you use for delivery. Another cool feature here is if you click on any of the materials you have added, you can include a link to where you purchase it. This way, whenever you need to buy it again, simply click on the link and it will take you directly to the website where you got it. Next, you can move to the fixed cost section. These are the necessary expenses that you have to pay in your business regardless of whether you are making 1 or 20,000 pieces per month. Here you can add things like the tools and machinery you use such as a sewing machine. Then in the next column, input how much it costs you. After that, estimate how many months it will last until you need a new one. For example here, if it's a sewing machine, it could last for 10 years, which is 120 months. In the next one, add an estimate of the number of products you could be making per month for your business. So let's say it's 50 items. This will automatically calculate the fixed cost that you need to add to your products. So whenever it's time to renew or pay any fixed expenses, you will be prepared. In addition to tools and machinery, fixed costs can also include things like your internet bill or memberships that can make your work easier or even the rent of your studio space when it's time to take your business to the next level. And now that we have these two sections completed, we can move on and start adding your products and getting those price calculations right. To do that, just click add new and open it in a full page so you can see everything better. Then add the name of your product, so let's imagine we are selling crop tops. Now we have the pricing process in three steps. The first one is cost calculations, starting with the raw materials. So here, let's think about what we need to make this product. For example, we will need fabric, so in the next column, choose which fabric from the inventory you're using. In this case, I want to use the white spandex fabric that I just added. If you input all your raw materials, you will probably have more than one option to choose from and you just need to type in the name you use for the one you're looking for. Then enter the quantity of this material that will be used. For example, half a yard and the total cost of the material will be automatically calculated. Repeat the process with all the materials you need to make and also to ship this product. Once you're finished, the total cost of raw materials will be displayed at the bottom of the total cost per material column. And to sync this with your inventory, I added a final column. Simply type the number of items you're currently making for this type of product. For instance, if you're only making one right now, type one. Click somewhere outside the box to see the little blue outline with a circle in the corner. Then drag the circle to copy the value to the rest of the list. Now, if you go to the main page where the global inventory of raw materials is located, you will see that the numbers have been updated. Updated. This means that whenever you make new pieces for this item, all you need to do is change the number and your inventory will be automatically updated. Moving on to labor cost, this is where you input all the time consuming activities required to create your product. For example, here could be sewing, adding crystals, and any other admin tasks such as taking pictures, creating a product listing, or shipping the item. In the next column, input your hourly rate or if you have someone else doing some of the tasks, their hourly rate. Then in the following column, add the total number of minutes it takes to complete each task, so the calculator can work its magic and tell you your labor cost. Here you can use any time tracking method that you prefer, and my favorite one is the Pomodoro technique. If you click on any of the task pages, you will find a Pomodoro tracker and timer. And here's how it works. 
First, write down the tasks you want to complete and estimate how many 25-minute work sessions it will take to finish it. Then, start the timer and take action to accomplish your goal or even beat your initial target. Each time you complete a 25-minute session, check off the box and the tracker will automatically calculate the total time it took you to finish the task. For example, if it took you 3 sessions, which is 75 minutes, you can add that to the labor database on your product page to calculate your labor cost. Repeat this process for all the activities and you will have the total labor cost at the bottom. After completing the labor cost, you will see your fixed cost. You don't have to do anything here because we already took care of that on the main page and these are just costs that apply to all your products in the same way so the template will automatically copy the original to every product page. So now we are ready for step number two, which is the actual pricing. This is where we add up all the numbers we have calculated so far. For example, if our raw materials total was 1102, we input that amount. Next, we add up our labor cost, which came to $50. And finally, for fixed costs, we input the amount of 2.94. Next, you gotta add up the shipping cost for this specific product. So let's say it's just $5 for domestic shipping. And now comes the fun part, which is the time to decide how much profit you wanna make. This totally depends on you, your market, and the type of product you're making. So there is no right or wrong answer here. Let's say you want to keep $15 per piece after paying all the costs. And once you add your desired profit to your cost, you get what is your wholesale price, which you can offer to everyone. However, if you want to give discounts without losing profit and have a wholesale price for distributors and your retail price for direct sales, you should add a retail markup. For me, retail markup is like profit 2.0. Just for this example, let's add another 15 bucks but of course you can choose whatever amount you feel is right for your product. So now down over here, you can check out what your wholesale and retail prices will look like. And if you plan on offering discounts sometimes, you can add in the percentage you want to discount by, and that way you can also take a look of what your discounted price will be. And here's an important note. You want to think of your wholesale price as the lowest you can sell your stuff to anyone and still make some cash. Therefore, it's important to check that the discounted price is somewhere in between the wholesale and the retail price and never less than the wholesale price or you could be potentially losing money on each sale. Now let's take a look at your actual profit after fees when you sell your products online using platforms like Etsy or payment processors like Stripe or PayPal. So here you can see how much you really earn after fees on each platform. Just click on each tab to see the estimate profit after the fees. And in the last tab, it shows you profit without fees in case you sell in person and receive cash payments. Usually when you have set a desired profit and a retail markup, your actual profit after fees will be positive because you have a cushion to pay for the fees and still make money. However, if you decide to sell at wholesale prices only and offer free shipping, more on that in a moment, then you need to be more careful with the fees because here you can see how fees affect your earnings and instead of earning 15, if you sell on Etsy, you will only earn $6.57. So here is what you can do. You can either bump up your profit or be creative with the shipping cost. The shipping cost column shows what you pay to ship the product, while the shipping price column shows what you charge your clients for shipping. All the past examples were made with the assumption of offering free shipping. However, if you want your clients to pay for the shipping, add it to the product price. And another option is to charge the client half of the shipping cost and cover the other half yourself. You can play with this section to set a price that will be profitable, but also feels right for your target market. Now let's move on to the final step, which is goal setting. Here you will find a list of the payment processors, including the cash sales, and in the next column, you can set your yearly goal and the amount you want to earn by selling this product in a year. I will use the same amount for all platforms so you can see the difference in results. Then you can enter the actual profit after fees, which you can find in the database above this section. For instance, if you sell on Etsy, your profit will be $20.15. If you sell through PayPal, $26. Stripe, it will be 26.83, and if you receive payments on cash, your profit will be 30 dollars. 
Then the calculator shows you automatically how many sales you need to make during the year to reach your goal. If you go to the monthly tab, you can find out how many sales you need per month to reach your goal. And if you go to the daily goal tab, it breaks down the number of daily sales you need in each platform to reach your set goal. This can be a fun and inspiring way to set money goals and keep track of how are you doing in reaching them. Lastly, you can add a picture of your product as the cover of the page to make it look extra nice and easy to find. Then in the price per unit section, you can set the final price for your product. And to use the charm pricing technique, you can round up your pricing numbers to end in 9 or 7. For example, here you can round 98.96 up to 99. And there you have it. You can repeat this process with any new products you plan to sell. Once you add them, your template will look something like this. And with these calculations, you can confidently price your items at their true value, avoid losing money and start cashing those checks. If you are also looking for a way to organize all your product ideas and Etsy listings in progress, here's another template you will love. Watch it next and I will see you there. Bye bye!